Hello everybody, this is James George at Sartree Manufacturing with a new series we're bringing you on how to get your professional career as a magician going. So you're just, you know, maybe you've learned 10, 20 new tricks and, and you're excited about getting out there and maybe getting some work in a restaurant or working with an event management company someone who can book you on a regular basis and actually get you earning money from your hobby so the goal is going to be giving you the tools techniques and some just some simple basic blueprints and strategies to get you started and I've had a lot of people request this from me here in India, so I thought I would just go ahead and turn this into a YouTube channel. I've looked around, I don't really see anyone else uh, doing this. So this is gonna be about helping you develop the personal power and the confidence to actually get out there, start taking action, and turning this into a real business. You know, David Copperfield's gonna be a billionaire just on magic alone, only being a magician. He's not going chasing after some job, some security, or any of that, because he, has a, he had a dream and he focused on it, and had, he brought something new and created something innovative. I mean, very much like me, you know, how my whole life changed just by inventing the ITR. And I'll kind of go through my own story, and I've had definitely my huge ups and huge downs and uh, what I hope to do now is to give back and give you back all the experience and stuff that I've learned over the last 40 years of doing magic and uh, can bring that to you and, and hopefully it'll be a value to your life so let's get started enough uh, rambling here so basically I'm gonna focus on just a basic close-up show first so you could get out there maybe talk to a few restaurants Maybe they have a slow night, maybe they have a Wednesday night or some karaoke night or something where they're going to need an additional draw to get people into their business and uh, that can be you. So what I also find is it doesn't take a lot of magic for you to actually become a professional restaurant worker. If your routines are funny, engaging and entertaining they tell a story and create a lot of fun and entertainment for the audience uh, you're 99% you're of the way there. The magic is very, actually very secondary. Um, in fact, well it should be strong and powerful and, and capture their attention but what's more important is that you're an entertainer and you have the tools, techniques to know how to develop rapport with an audience and uh, you know overcome your own personal fears of you know, talking to people you don't know, how to introduce yourself, how to get instant rapport with the people in the, in the crowd so you're connecting well with them and you're able to communicate confidently and uh, share with them some wonder and uh, create a magical experience that's a value to the restaurant, a value to the customers, uh, possibly earn you some extra money in tips and uh, also start to earn money so that you can, you know, this hobby isn't just costing you money. You can be making money and the cool part is this probably wouldn't interfere with your regular job. So let's get started. Um, so basically I can't, you know, sponge balls is definitely a go-to item for close-up magic. It's hard to beat the power of having the magic happen in their hands. So if you haven't learned a basic sponge ball routine, um, I would definitely recommend this has got to be one of the things you master and incorporate in your show. It's a great way, it's a great opener, it's powerful, and it's a lot of fun. You can create some clever, fun story like I've done. And I don't recommend you just copy everything I do. You're going to want to put some of your own creativity and thinking into it and make it yours. Because if you don't do that, uh, it won't be fun for you for very long. You're going to get bored with it really quickly. And you're also going to want to keep asking yourself how you can be making it better. How can I, I improve this? You know, and that's the challenge is to keep pushing yourself to the next level and not just sit comfortably with what you already know. 
So as far as sponge ball goes, you're gonna wanna learn the basic move. I actually do just a really simple routine. I'll take the ball, I put it in this hand, then I'll take another ball and I just poke it in there and I tell the ladies, if I squeeze it really hard, it might turn into a diamond. And that gets them all excited. And uh, of course, sadly, I'm not able to squeeze it that hard, but I can squeeze it hard enough so that it becomes one ball. Now I can take it and I can rub it on my knee or on a table and using my finger as a knife, I can cut it right back into two balls, just like that. And that usually blows their mind, just, you know, just getting started. And then I go into the bit where I have them hold their hand out and I just take one of the balls and I'll place it in my hand. And then I can have them grab my wrist here so there's no way nothing can get in or out. Now I take this ball and it goes into their hand over here, so I put it into their hand, and then I make the ball magically disappear from here and it goes into their hand over there. So basically it involves just one sleight of hand move that you have to master. And I recommend practicing this in front of the mirror, but it should look like this. So it really looks like the ball goes in your hand. Now how you do that, and you know, I hope you keep this a secret. It's you know one of the greatest secrets in magic, and uh, it's simple enough. You know, it's in every basic magic book. If people want to find it out, they're going to dig it out and find it on the internet, no problem. So I don't think it's going to be a problem teaching you this, and I don't plan to you know advertise this channel to ordinary people, just people who are interested in magic and already pursuing it as a hobby. So I do hope you share this channel with your friends. We're going to be giving you a lot of great ideas, but sponge balls is definitely number one in terms of putting together a close-up show. The other, the other routines I would recommend learning is, you know, everybody's doing a, an ambitious card routine. You can learn that. I don't happen to focus on that myself. I do have one that I can do, um, and it's great, you know, especially if you're doing a card to the forehead at the end or a card to mouth maybe a signed card to wallet um, as an ending to it. It can be a very powerful routine. Um, one routine that I recommend and has served me well for maybe, oh, I would say about um, 30 years now, long time, and that is Dave Neighbors' uh, Joker Money, he calls it. And I'll give you guys a quick demonstration of that. Let me see here. We'll just move this out of the way. So basically, yeah, any gambling routine I find works really well. I mean, people are interested in winning money. You can tell them about the time you went to Las Vegas and you can tell them about how to bring back a small fortune. And of course, that's by taking a big fortune with you and uh, usually get to laugh. And that's the other thing we'll be covering is incorporating comedy and, you know, fun dialogue into your routines and giving you some ideas on that in a future series. But I just want to stick to just getting a basic close-up show so that by the end of this video, you have a clear-cut blueprint and plan that you're able to take action on and actually go start making this happen. And if you already have some routines mastered, obviously you can throw those in too. All right, so one of the tricks that served me really well for the last 30 years is called Joker Money by Dave Neighbors. And you can pick this up uh, through us on Amazon.com eventually, or you can buy it from your favorite magic dealer. Um, and basically it starts with four blue back bicycle cards. Now you're going to want to um, master one slight that this uses that's called the Emsley count and it's in counts, cuts, and moves. That's one book you can find it in. There's a lot of DVDs and probably even a video on YouTube that covers this in detail but it's basically allowing you to look like the cards are all face down. So, but I'll be teaching this later on, or actually, yeah, so we cover it, but because it covers one of the most basic moves that you're gonna need to do here, and that's the Elmsley count. So anyway, let me go ahead and show you the routine and why I think it's really a great one to add to your close-up uh, magic show. 
or something along these lines. Maybe another uh, gambling routine would serve you well. So we have one, we have two, three blue back bicycle cards. We have the queen, that's the money card. That's the card you want to keep your eye on. So we'll take the queen, we'll place it face down on the table. And just to confuse you, we reverse one of the jokers. Now I'm going to bet 5,000 bucks where the queen went. And most people are thinking it's the one on the table, but never ever bet the obvious. So we'll take the queen, and this time I'll just slide it under the joker. And to make it even harder, I'm going to mark one of the jokers with a paper clip. Just like that. Now I'm trying to win my money back. I'm out five grand, so I'm going to bet 10,000 bucks on where the queen went. I was almost sure I saw it go on the table. And no, sadly, it's right here. It's the one with the paper clip on it, just like that. And now, uh, I, I know what you're thinking, and that's probably that we're using too many cards, and I would agree. So I'm just going to mix some of these up, some face up, some face down. But what we're going to do, we're going to get rid of one of the jokers, maybe this one on top. And then we'll bet on where the queen went. So most people are thinking, uh, you know, I don't ever recommend picking the middle one. So I'm out, uh, I'm out actually 15,000 now, so I'd have to bet $30,000 on where the queen went. So I'm trying my luck, 60,000, 120,000. So obviously this isn't a game you should play uh, to try to win money, but here's the queen right in the wallet right where we left it. I don't know if you noticed it at the beginning, but the cards are actually marked. So I'm cheating, as us magicians do have a reputation for doing, but the queen is actually marked on the back. I don't know if you can see it in the camera there, but it helps if you compare it to the other backs of the jokers. Now I'm a little bit colorblind myself, but as you can see, it's clearly marked differently. Nice kicker ending. Uh, just a very entertaining routine and served me ex incredibly well over the years. And I think it would serve you well too. Any kind of a gambling routine, you could look at Richard Turner for some ideas there. He's got a lot of gambling tricks. Sam the Bell Bellhop by Bill Malone is another great routine. You know, a lot of people have done it, but it, there's no reason why you can't update it, change the story, personalize it, and make it yours. And that way, you know, it should be fun for you to perform. If it's not fun for you, it's not going to be fun for your audience. And so you want to think about that because your audience is really just a reflection and mirror of you in a lot of ways. And we'll go into more detail of the philosophy behind that. And if you're not getting the reflection back in the mirror that you like, uh, you're going to want to take a look at the source for that. And that's what we're going to be digging into here. You know, this is kind of going to be a personal journey of growth on your own. That's what I find in the magic business and magic itself is kind of a tool for our own personal growth. And I think this can be a path of self-discovery and, and personal transformation as well, as you'll discover as you go along this, if you're going to turn this into a successful career and become a successful magician and what that's going to take. So yeah, this is very exciting for me. I'm looking forward to uh, creating our next video. So you can work on the sponge ball routine and get down under your belt some kind of gambling routine. I think those are gonna be two very important ones in terms of getting a close-up show together. Maybe be thinking about an ambitious card routine, a torn and restored card, something visual, something quick. Even some tricks with the, with the thumb tip or the ITR is a great idea. We'll be covering those in more detail in a future episode. But yeah, I appreciate your support. You know, uh, it's been great. I've had an incredible life just on magic alone. I've never had a real job per se, only uh, just out of high school and college when I worked at UPS for a couple of years. But magic's been my life, and now it's time for me to share with you all the things I've learned over the past 40 years of doing magic and pursuing magic. And uh, time for me to get back. So I hope this is of value to you, and uh, I hope you can share it with your friends, and tell us uh, what you think in the comments below. 
and maybe what you'd like us to cover in some of the future episodes, and I can create a video around that as well. So yeah, I've been very fortunate to travel the world with magic and learn so many things from so many different magicians, and I'm gonna be sharing all that with you. So let's get on to the next episode, and I'll see you right here.